Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers knockoff review just when you thought it was safe to stop collecting the Weijang MPP-10. Along comes the MPP-10Z Battle Commander. Uh, this is the kind of battle damaged cartoonish version of Optimus Prime. Taking a quick look at the back of the box we have Prime with his gun in both his bot and vehicle mode and we have some added accessories on the bottom there we get some additional articulated fingers and a bigger rifle and here we have him out of his plastic prison now before we take a look at prime himself let's take a look at all of his accessories first up we get a spike uh, pretty much exactly the same as every other spike Wei Zhang have released uh, this guy's legs are a little bit stiffer around the knee joint there and the paint's a little bit thicker, but there is no battle damage on Spike. I don't know if he would have come with like half his arm hanging off or something like that, or some, at least some scars on his face. But nope, we have nothing at all, as is the Matrix. Uh, the Matrix does look pretty much the same. They could have dinged it up a little bit, had a little bit of damage on there, but I guess it's closed inside Prime's chest cavity so it's not going to get damaged. We get his rifle with some kind of silver painting around the edges. It does kind of give it that rugged look. Uh, still very springy as needed but uh, I don't know. I mean they've painted the right areas. Uh, this is something that customizers could probably do themselves but I'm rubbish at stuff like that so it's nice to have one that's already pre-done. The Energon Axe uh, has lots of kind of silver spray on it. Uh, my impression for this is that he's kind of taken chunks out of Decepticons and the paint on there is from them. It's maybe a little bit too thickly applied, but again, that's something that customizers could do and uh, they've done it for us. We get the larger rifle very different in size which we just flip down the handle again it's got the same sort of paint detailing around the edges just scuffs where it's been dropped picked up and thrown now this rifle is exactly the same as the bb7 rifle so they've either bootlegged the bb7 rifle or they are one and the same and they are working together. Uh, BB-7, it's just a battery function in here with an LED light, and it's just the difference of adding those silver flecks. And the same can be said with these articulated hands. Although these do appear to be much stiffer than the BB-7 upgrade that I have on my MPP-10, these aren't exactly a perfect color match for Prime. He has this much more pastel blue and these are definitely more kind of in keeping with the Takara style blue that they used for their MPP-10. I'm hoping you can see the difference there on camera. This is definitely a much deeper blue. This one's almost got like an aqua marine sheen to it. Uh, unfortunately they haven't really battle damaged these hands so they're kind of forcing you into changing them out for these but this, these just don't quite match color wise. I am more than happy to keep the hands that Prime comes with as standard. I mean I know it's not perfect and people are going to say I could have done this bit better, I could have done that bit better but personally I think he looks exceptional. I love the blues and greys that they've used. Uh, it is a very good figure. The MPP-10, in my opinion, was a big turning point for KO figures. And this, in my opinion, is the definitive version and color of that mold. Uh, this has that kind of feel and texture about it that the battle damaged M01 had, although the paint on that M01 was kind of thicker and I really didn't get on with it that well, hence I sold it on after 
reviewing it, but this guy I like. I haven't really put him down since I got him, and he has already replaced my current MPP-10 on my display, battling off against the NE-01 Megatron with his battle damage Chester. Personally, I would have liked him to be released in this kind of battle damaged color as well, but any zero one is pretty new to the market, so there is still time and hope. Here they are both together. I mean, personally, if this is your first time viewing the MPP-10, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with whichever version you go with. It's an outstanding figure, but personally, I think this paint scheme and the battle damage, I think it really does highlight what an exceptional job Hasbro and Takara did with the original MP10. And again, here I have him alongside the NE01 Megatron. Uh, he's got that battle damage chest done, but I think that's something I need to work on as well. I think we need an additional battle damage chest for that. And we need him painted up and kind of battered and bruised much like Prime. Now let's take a closer look at that paint and sculpting. Got such bold blue piercing eyes. We've got some paint damage on the antennae. That's a really, really nice application on that head there. I mean, just look at the chest. I love this kind of shattered glass style breakage and the crack across here. Not sure what's going on with the additional silver paint on the top there, whether that's meant to be there or not. I think these are all kind of hand painted and everyone is slightly different. But I definitely like what they've done with this. We've got some kind of cosmic rust painted on around that abdominal section. We've got some damage on the side here. They've painted up the smokestacks that are now kind of a charcoal gray with some darkening on the top there and then coming around to the thighs we've got some damage on the back here love this silver paint that's been used here and all of these scuffs on the legs so you see i'm rubbing the paint uh getting a little bit of powder off but nothing really untoward uh it's applied fairly nicely and very evenly uh, still highlighting and picking out the additional detailing on the inner legs just opening up the chest we now have a kind of smoked gray matrix housing and just lifting that up we've still got the black plastic underneath although it does again feel kind of more smoked and there we have the matrix chamber done in this kind of gunmetal grey and black and we can just pop the matrix in there nice and tidily and close that off really want Wei Zhang to do Magnus as well so I can pass this matrix on maybe give us a dead prime as well or maybe I should do that with my MPP-10 I'll send it to somebody like Spurt Reynolds and get him to paint it up as a dead prime. Uh, before we get him transformed up, I would just like to cover the articulation for those who haven't seen it yet. The head can look up and down. We can go left and right. Unfortunately, we can't pivot side to side. We do have the additional movement on this lower piece of the neck. The shoulders can pop outwards, allowing for a nice motion upwards, downwards, and we can go all the way around pushing that back in we have an elbow rotation we also have extensions on the arms they can come down or be contracted like so the bend is a 90 degree bend i would have liked more than that but uh, unfortunately that's something we've never got the static hands uh, have a rotation and we have an additional pin through the trigger finger which is uh, more than adequate i think prime has nice waist articulation on a friction joint no abdominal crunch the legs can come that far forwards that far back on wonderful ratchets out to the side on a softer ratchet 
we have an upper thigh rotation in there. We get rotation on the knee, we get a lovely ratchet on that knee, and we get pivots on the feet up and down. Unfortunately, no left and right motion. And we get additional articulation on the toe and on the heel spur. Now to get Prime transformed up, we're going to push the arms in, flip this panel down, rotate the fists up and around, and then close that section back off. Then push and collapse these in. Fold down the truck ladders. We want to fold these panels all the way around and then bring the legs together, tabbing those in, come to the back, press these pieces in and the legs will retract quite nicely until they lock into place. Slide these feet across until they push and lock. Bring these up and together. Thick paint on these does make this a lot more difficult than what it usually is. These panels here can come around and they're gonna fold down and lay on the side. Open up Prime's chest, rotate Prime's waist around and then pull this tab on the front, disconnecting this upper torso piece. Now bring this torso all the way forward, rocking this hinge here backwards. That's now gonna slide up and over, tabbing in to the backpack and then pushing and tabbing in firmly to this underside. We can now bring these wheel panels down, rotate these around, and that now brings the headlight and bumper sections round to the front. Make sure these front pieces are brought down just so they're out of the way and we don't have any clearance issues. Bring the matrix covers up and this is gonna bring down and that's going to slot either side of these that's going to come down nice and firmly, clicking into place. Uh, now we can now slide these arms in. And if we look on the underside here, there's a groove just inside there. These arms are going to slide into that gap and they're going to get into the groove. Just pushing and sliding. Just slide with me. Just slide with me. There. Make sure these wheel arches are all lined up. Make sure everything is pushed and tabbed in there firmly. A primed head can now push and fold down, completely clicking into place. All of these are in nicely, and then we can bring these up, and they should just. Go over and tab in wonderfully, he says. Just lining up, completing the look of Prime. Bring these windows in, make sure they're tabbed in. Fully extend those smokestacks here like this on Prime to so make sure they are fully extended. Come to the gas tanks, bring those forward, and they're just gonna push and tab in to that panel to the side of those hip skirts, securing everything in to place. Let's flip open those wing mirrors. And there we have battered and bruised Prime. And there we have him fully transformed up. What a gorgeous looking piece. Again, it's not perfect. For some reason, mine doesn't want to roll on all of the wheels. You need to kind of push down to get those wheels to interact. Uh, my skirt does like to kind of tip in a little bit there as well, but it looks incredible. The paint applications are very nice on this. We've got some lovely painted up rims on there. The scuffs kind of make a little bit more sense. I still have a great difficulty uh, kind of bringing these toes down to be square just because of how much paint is on them. They don't really, slide in where they're meant to at the correct angle but 
that looks really nice. I think we need some kind of Toy Hacks repro labels on the lights just to make those pop a bit. But all in all, it's a very good looking Prime. In my opinion, the best of the bunch. If we just bring in another battered and bruised version, this is the KO shattered glass done in the proper shattered glass colors. And of course, we then have a masterpiece sized Lamborghini there. Uh, personally, I think the masterpiece Lambos and cars, I think they all scale better, in my opinion, with the giant MPP10 in vehicle mode. I think that's how it should be. But I know some of you may disagree, but each to their own. All in all, it's a very good figure, no matter what version of the mold you get. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed. This personally is my favorite coloring and I think I will be putting my MPP-10 either on a slab to be painted or on a sale page to be sold. This has taken the top spot. Thanks again to TF Direct for making this review possible. Uh, I've included a link in the description below where this can be purchased. And until next time, for myself and Prime, thanks for watching, goodbye.